Hello and welcome to another video. Now this video is a very special topic. It's called related rates because we're not just dealing with one quantity, but we're dealing with quantities that relate to each other. Or even more than two quantities. We might have three or four quantities, okay? But it's the same principle, the principle of the chain rule, okay? Something multiplies something that multiplies something and eventually you get what you're looking for. So look at this question, for example. We're told that the length of the sides of an equilateral triangle is increasing at 10 centimeters per minute. So the length of each side is increasing. So you have a triangle that all the sides are the same. And this side, each side is increasing at the rate of 10 centimeters per minute. At what rate is the area increasing? See, when you don't understand, you might just think that, oh, well, if the side is increasing at a certain rate, then since it's area, I can just double it, or I can square it, or it's the same. Well, it doesn't always work like that. So do not make those assumptions, because that's what students do when they don't know what to do. So remember, this is an application of the chain rule. So in order to help yourself, why don't you recall what the chain rule looks like? Let me write it. You remember that if you want to differentiate, because that's what you call the composite, um, a, a composite function, something is a function of something, which is also a function of something. So look at this. The area of this triangle is a function of x. Okay, and you can now write x as a function of time, which is what they've given you. So look at this this way, that y is a function, or let's not say y, let's say the area now. So let's say the area is a function of x. But you're not looking for the relationship between the area and this. That's not the question. The question is saying, at what rate is the area increasing? At what rate? That's dA dt. So we're looking for a as a function of time. That's what we're looking for. But we know the relationship between a and x. Uh, do we know it? Well, you expect it to have learned how to find the area of a triangle, which you know. So let's just show them that we know how to find the relationship between area and the length of the side because they've already given us x as a function of t. Okay, so remember the, the, the connection here is what you call the chain rule because this is a composite function because now we can say that dA the t, which is what we're looking for, the rate of change of area with time is equal to dA dx times dx dt. They've given us dx dt. Go back to the question. That is the rate at which the side is increasing, 10 centimeters per minute. So you see that the only thing you're looking for is this. Because you know this already to be 10, you don't know this but they will expect you to be able to establish this. And that's what every student has to be able to do. You have to establish this yourself. Nobody's gonna tell you that that's what you're supposed to do. So sometimes it's not area and sides. Sometimes it's not a triangle, it's a rectangle or a square or a circle and the radius or the sphere or the volume of a sphere or the surface area, all kinds of things related together. Make sure you know your geometry, make sure you know your algebra because that's what you will need in this kind of question. Yeah, yeah, you gotta know that. Okay, let's get into this. So let's do first things first, okay? We've established the relationship that we're gonna have that what we need is to actually say dA dt, which is what we're looking for, is dA dx times dx dt. Well, we know dx dt is already given in the problem and we are asked to find the rate at which the area is increasing, which is dA dt. This is the only part they never told us, which they expect you to know. So we're gonna say dA dt, we don't know. Well, but we know dx dt to be 10 centimeters per minute. So how do we establish dA dx? Well, we have to be able to find the area of an equilateral triangle in terms of the sides. So let's do that quickly. 
So let me just write what you're supposed to do here. Find the area in terms of the sides, which will be x. So let's say we have a, an equilateral triangle. Each side is x, this is x, this is x. How do you find the area of this? Well, remember, the area of a triangle is half base times height. Well, there's no height here. Well, you could use Hero's formula also, which is the square root of s into s minus x mi and to times x mi s minus x times s minus x. That's going to be a bit com complicated for you, so you don't want to go in that direction. You know something about this kind of triangles? Do you know? This angle theta equals 60 because it's an equilateral triangle. So all the angles will be 60 each. Use that and use this other formula that the area of this triangle is half AB sine theta, where AB will be the two sides that formed sine theta. Well, we know all the thetas are 60 degrees and all the ABs are X and X. So we can conclude that this is one half of X times X times sine 60 degrees, that will be equal to, well, we know x times x, that will be, so what is sine 60? Let's write it, one half of x squared times rad three over two. You need to know this also, okay? This is something you must know at this point, okay? So if we multiply these together, you'll end up with a being equal to rad three over four x squared. This is the area of any equilateral triangle. All equilateral triangles, this is it. You just need to plug in what x is. Now, what's the rate of change of area with respect to the side? That's our dA dx, which is what we need to find this because we already know this. So let's do that. What's dA dx? dA dx will be equal to uh, the derivative of this. So if we bring down the two, it's gonna be two multiplied by rad three over four, and this x would be two minus one, which would be x to the one. And that gives us that, let's go here. So now we say that dA dx equals, this two will uh, take out one of the two, so you have rad three over two, so this is gonna be rad three over two x. That is dA dx. So, that's, that's the most difficult part of this problem. Maybe the second most difficult part. The most difficult part is knowing that you need to find a relationship between the area and the side. That should be the easiest part. Okay, let's just go into this. Now let's end this. So this is our formula. We already established this. We already know this. Let's do it. So finally, we say the A to T equals dA dx times dx dt. What is dA dx? We've got it. It's square root of 3 over 2x. And what is dx dt? It's right there, 10 centimeters per minute. So we just write 10. Well, um, what is x? Oh, they gave us x in the question. Let's write that somewhere. x equals 30 centimeters. Okay, we forgot to write that from the question. So now we can plug in 30 in place of x, and that's going to be rad 3 over 2 times 30 times 10. Okay, that looks like it's going to be, um, that's it, 150 rad 3, and because it's dA dt, the unit of area is centimeters squared, and the time is in minutes. So it's gonna be centimeters squared per minute. Remember to always do that, okay? Put the unit, the correct unit. And that is the beautiful answer to this beautiful question using the chain rule to solve related rates. Beautiful. Never stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.